we can fake that using the translucence. Um, let me try to explain this the easiest way I can. This translucence value, imagine this value the same thing as a color. So zero is white, and or actually uh, black, and all the way to the right would be white, just like our color up here or our transparency. If we take this and move this, you can see our transparency, the color is black, which is a value of zero. Transparency, completely white, would represent a value of one. So down here with our transparency, one is white, and translucence of zero would be black. So just keep that in mind. We're, we're going to click on this little button over here at the far right. It says translucent. And we're going to click on this ramp. Now you can see we've got some colors over here. And we want this to be all black and white or shades of black and white. So any kind of grays. To add colors, just click anywhere in here. To get rid of colors, click on the, the boxes over here on the right side. To change the colors, click on the circles. So let's click this top blue circle. Hit right down here, select like the color. Let's click on there and change it to black. Except the bottom circle, change it to black. Middle circle, change to white. Except up here, it says interpolation. We're going to change it from linear to none. Grab the middle circle, drag it down to create kind of like a little band at the bottom and then just drag this black at the top down a little bit. All right, if you look at our texture sample, we've got a black stripe at the top, a black stripe at the bottom, and everything in the middle is white. So basically, if you look at this lamp, the middle of the lamp is gonna be white, which is 100% trans, uh, translucent. The top and bottom are black, which means 0% translucent. So if we do a render right now, and look at our, you can see that that bottom stripe strip, we basically told it to have no translucence, a value of zero. The top value of zero, the middle a value of 100. Okay, that's a little bit too much and not enough on the bottom, so let's adjust those. I'm gonna select the white color, and let's just knock that down to maybe something about like that. So it's uh, less translucent. Let's select the black colors and let's bring those up some to where they're a little bit less translucent than the center of our lamp. But not too much. All right. Let's do another test render. And we're just going to keep playing with those colors until we get something that looks decent. And I think that's actually going to work right there. All right, I like that right there. It looks pretty good. And again, you can change those colors to get as translucent as you want. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and keep that image. I want to show you one more thing. Let me go back into the regular shader node. We've got this, uh, there's a translucent value, there's a translucent depth and translucent focus. The focus, if I change this all the way up to, uh, to one, Let's do a render. And you can see the translucence. It's hard to see, but it's like a little tiny dot right there in the center of our lamp. That's the only place that's translucent. That's the focus of it. So if we keep that image, I'm going to change this translucent or the uh, focus down to zero. And you can see up here in our materials shader. Now the translucence is more spread out in our lamp. So we can make it look like there's a bulb in there by changing the focus. So there's how it was before. That's 50, that's 0, and there's 100. So 50 was actually a pretty good number, or 0.5. So I'm just going to put it back to 0.5 and leave it there. All right, let's go ahead and save this. And the next step now is let's just look at our render one more time. Everything's looking pretty good except the uh, darkness of the front of our objects, at least the, the lamp post and the table top. So we want to brighten those up a little bit, and we could even use the fill to brighten up the top of our table and stuff a little more. But everything else looks good. The, the lamp inside should be kind of a bright white, so we'll do something about that as well. 
All right, let's go ahead and add a fill light. So let's create lights, and we can use a area light. Actually, I'll use a directional light. It's going to situate this up here. And let's just rotate that so it's shining down on our table so we can brighten the top of our table a little bit. And the color of our light, let's make it match the other stuff. So just kind of bring this up, make it kind of a kind of a yellowish, orangish color. Not the saturation down about halfway. Except as far as intensity goes, I'm gonna take it all the way down and I'm just gonna go up just till it brightens everything up just a little bit. But maybe not, that's probably too much. So maybe something about like that. I got mine at 0.248. Let's go back to our render angle. And right now, it's, our light is hitting everything. I only want it to hit the lamp post, the lamp base, and the tabletop. So let's go up to our rendering menu set. Go up to light, lighting and shading. Go down to light linking editor over to light centric. Left hand column, you'll see some lights. There's our directional light. On the right, you'll see a bunch of stuff highlighted. Everything that's highlighted is being affected by the light. So what we want to do is we only want the lamp post, lamp base, and tabletop highlighted as far as our objects go. So let's unhighlight all this stuff, expand our table, highlight the tabletop, expand our lamp, highlight the post and the base. So now we can do a render. And that fill light, that directional light, should only be affecting the tabletop and the lamp post and the lamp base. All right, looks much better. So now it's, it just kind of brightened that up a little bit. And let's get rid of some of these. Let's see, I don't need this one. Now see how that's bright white underneath there? That's what we want to do. All right, let's bring that up. Get rid of that one. All right, so now if you look, compare those two, you can see it just kind of brightened it up a little bit. All right, it looks like it's hitting our picture too. But actually, it looks it looks okay like that. It looks pretty good like that. I think it looks a little better. All right. The next step is everything looks good. I like the color. Let's make this white. And then once we make that white, our render will be done, and we can do a full big render. But we're going to make that white without affecting anything else. If we turn up the brightness of our light, it's going to make it's going to change the lighting scheme. That's not going to look good. I, I like it the way it is. I want to keep it that way. If we change the translucence focus of our lamp shader, that can make it wider and uh, more bright, but it's just not going to look as realistic. It's going to look like we got like a big bulb in there and not a small bulb. So what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a quick and dirty way of doing this without messing with the UVs by adding a different material to the inside of our lamp. So let me just hit the number five on my keyboard to get rid of the the lighting part. And I'm just going to select, I'm going to select a face up there, shift select. Or I'm, the way I did that was I'm just clicking on, a, uh, clicking on a face, holding down the shift button, and double clicking a face next to it. And what that will do, it will select all the faces all the way around. I'm going to do that same thing at the bottom, hold the shift button down, click on a face, double click one next to it. And now I'm going to use my paint select tool to select all the other faces in between. Or at least try to. <laughs> all right, so we got all the faces inside the lamp selected. All I did right there was just hit the letter W just to get out of that paint select tool. All right, I'm going to right click, assign new material, and we'll do Lambert. I'm going to go ahead and name it to SHDR underscore lamp inside. The color, I'm going to make it white. All right, so let's go back to our render angle. Do a render, see what we have now. And we're just about done with this.
All right, we've got a white on there, but it's still looking yellow. So what we're going to do is let's keep that. Let's select our lamp inside shader node. Right there where it says incandescence. Just bump that up some. All right, you can see it's already brightening that up now, making it more white looking. And that's actually pretty good right there. I think that's going to work. All right, so everything looks good. Let's go ahead and look at everything we've done, just to kind of recap. There is our regular render. Next step is we just added a point light that didn't cast any shadows. We added a point light that casted shadows, a combination of the two. Then we added some trans, we just changed the lighting, make it a little bit darker. We added some translucence to the, sh the shade. There we kind of just used a translucence, uh, used a ramp for the translucence to, to kind of simulate a ribbon on the bottom and top of the lamp to make it look a little better. There we just adjusted the colors of our ramp. We added a fill light right there just to kind of brighten up the front face of our tabletop and our lamp post and base. And then we added a material on the inside with some incandescence to brighten that up on the inside to make it look a little more realistic like a photo. So now we're ready for a real test on our render. So let's open up our render settings, change the quality to production. Let's go to our, actually let's just scroll down and right here our multi-pixel filtering. Let's change it from Goss to Mitchell. Common tab, make this a big size, 1024, and render. Okay, here's our render. It looks really great, except our shadow is real, it's not really smooth. So let's fix that real quick, but everything else looks great. I really like the way everything turned out. That took a minute to render, a minute and four seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let's close that out. We need to select our light. So let me open up the outliner, select the light that has a shadow. Let's scroll down to our shadow setting, and let's increase the shadow rays to 64 and do another render. All right, here is our final result. And this uh, lighting looks really great. I like the lighting scheme. Basically what I did was I just did a Google search and found a table lamp that I kind of liked. I liked the lighting scheme and all I did was just recreated that inside Maya and added a picture. So it wasn't really too difficult. It's probably borderline advanced lighting. Uh, not really quite advanced but um, definitely a little bit more than basic. But since we didn't really have any, at least at the time that I'm doing this, we don't really have any um, lighting tutorials. So we kind of wanted to just kind of provide you all with a, a nice lighting tutorial that you can create some nice lighting schemes. So I hope you learned something from this, and thanks for watching.